What's up guys? Let's talk about the exposure triangle. So you may be new to photography or videography and you set your camera in auto or P mode, which doesn't mean professional, it means peasant mode and you need to get out of it. You need to go to M mode, manual, so you have all of the control that you want over your exposure. So there are three main things to getting a correct exposure or a desired exposure. And typically it's referred to as the exposure triangle. You have shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. And the relationship between those three have to be just right in order to get the desired exposure, whether you want to be overexposed or underexposed or correctly exposed. If you understand how the shutter speed works, it's basically a curtain that comes down like this and in front of the sensor. And the speed, the time that that sensor is exposed to light is your shutter speed. ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor or the film to light. So the higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is going to be to light. Now f-stop or aperture is basically, if you think of it like your iris, the iris of your eyes. You know, the smaller it gets when you're, it's bright outside, you think about that. So the smaller the iris, the larger the number. So like f-16 is going to be really, really small versus f2.8, which is gonna be a lot wider. So I've got my 51.2, and if you turn it on, if you can see that right now, it's set at f13. Let's go all the way to f16, and watch what happens. See it shut all the way down. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's shutting all the way down versus going all the way to 1.2, which is wide open. Here, let's do this. See how wide open 1.2 is? Versus F16. So there are pros and cons to each of these. So say you would want a slower shutter speed so that more light is allowed to hit the sensor. The slower you go, the more chance you have of int introducing motion blur. But on the flip side, the faster you go, the darker it may be. Now with ISO, the lower the ISO, the less sensitive your sensor is. That sounds great, but if it's still not bright enough, you need to bump up your ISO. The negative side of that is it introduces a lot of noise, a lot of grain into the image. Now aperture, you'd, you'd probably think, just keep it at the lowest number, 2.8, 3.5, whatever your lens goes to, and just keep it there. The negative side of that is the wider your aperture is, the shallower your depth of field is. Like 1.2, it's razor, razor thin. You can, it's so hard to pull focus at 1.2. 2.8, it's a little bit more manageable. 3.5, pretty easy to get. But the higher you go, the less light is coming in and hitting your sensor. Now you see why it's important to find the relationship between those three points of exposure. Now you can go light and bright and overexpose something on purpose or dark and moody, you know, whichever you decide. Or you can have a correctly exposed image. Now it can be really intimidating jumping into manual mode, getting off of program or auto or you know whatever your camera may say. So let's break it down to where it's a little bit more common language. The aperture or the f-stop is just the size of the opening inside the lens. The larger the opening, the smaller the number. So a large opening, 2.8 versus f5, which is a smaller opening, lets more light in. The shutter speed is just a measurement of time that the shutter is actually open and exposing light on the sensor. An ISO is just a measure of the sensitivity of your sensor or film. So don't be afraid to get out of auto mode and go into manual mode. You're shooting digital probably, so it doesn't matter. Shoot away, go nuts. Go nuts. Go out there, pick a subject, a flower. Go pick your pet, your kids, your friends, whatever. Go and try it out. I bet you'd be surprised. So I hope you got something out of this video today. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.